Hi, this is Dr. Will Lane. I want to start with an introduction today on what I think is one of the key essential points of good health, which is the Mediterranean anti-inflammatory diet. And one of the reasons it's called the anti-inflammatory diet is it actually changes the biochemical uh, markers in your body that affect inflammation. And think about not only your aches and pains, but all the health conditions we know of that are affected by inflammation, such as heart disease, asthma, allergies, heartburn. And that's why this diet is so incredibly important and so useful in creating better health. So what we're going to do is give you kind of an overview of this diet. And then as we go through your curriculum and life views, we will try to dive into certain parts of it in more detail and give you specific examples and recipes to help you. But this diet will hopefully um, give you an overview of where we're going so we can start making changes in your lifestyle to get you healthy. So the key components of this is that it's primarily a plant-based diet. You really want a very high intake of vegetables and fruits, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. When you're choosing an oil, you want to use olive oil. This has a much higher amount of omega-3 and much lower in omega-6, which as we talk about later is one of the key components of your body's inflammatory response. You want a fairly high intake of fish and relatively low intake compared to what you may be used to of dairy products, poultry, and red meat. This is actually a picture of olives to again emphasize the importance of using olive oil. Now, if you're actually baking, you may obviously not want the flavor of olive oil, and then canola oil would be your next best choice. So let's go into a little bit more detail. Um, I would say for the majority of people, we're trying to get in eight to 10 servings of vegetables and fruit a day. Now there's a reason why vegetables are listed first, um, because you actually want to eat more vegetables in the day than fruit. And a serving, people always ask, what is a serving? And there are some really good places where you can get specific um, quanti quantitation of what a serving is, but a ballpark estimate is the palm of your hand is a serving. So this may not be quite as daunting a number, eight to 10 servings as you may think, if you have half a plate of broccoli, that's actually gonna be several servings of a vegetable. And as we look at fruits, people ask, well, you know, fruits are high in sugar. I, maybe I shouldn't have a lot of fruits because I'm trying to lose weight. Well, certain fruits are actually fairly low in the glycemic index. Almost all the berries are really good for you. Apples, pears, peaches, and even cherries are all fairly low sugar fruits when eaten as whole foods. And so I think those are great things to incorporate into your diet. I think an important saying in this diet is eat the rainbow. And that means every day you want to get your fruits and vegetables that represent each of the major colors, your reds, greens, purples, and orange color. And that's because these are all different aspects of antioxidants. And you can't store antioxidants if you eat a ton of spinach. It's not going to last you the whole week. Every day you need each type of antioxidant represented in each color. And so that requires a little bit of planning, but this is very important as we discuss later how antioxidants are crucial to your health. Another good saying to help keep you on track is eat meat with less legs. So that means fish is a better choice than chicken, which is a better choice than red meat. A minimum of fish two times a week, and ideally more, should be cold water fish and not farm-raised fish. That will actually increase, uh, by cold water fish, you get more of the omega-3 in your diet. You want to, if you do poultry, ideally to make it free range or organic. And we'll talk more about that in uh, future lectures, but the organic poultry has a higher amount of omega-3 in it and better nutrition. Um, and really try to limit red meat, but if you can do red meat, obviously make it a leaner cut and free range organic is better. So this is bok choy, and you really want to get used to using all different types of vegetables, and this is one of my favorite. It's very inexpensive, and it's great in stir fries. Berries. Every morning I try to start my day and my kid's day with some type of berry. Very high in antioxidant, low in sugar. You can see the rich color is, I think, a crucial part of a healthy diet and a great way to start your day. So going further, uh, nuts can be a very important part of this diet. <clears throat> and I'm really not talking about peanuts, which actually is a legume, 
but walnuts such as uh, nuts such as walnuts, almonds, or pistachios. And these are very high in omega-3. They have good fiber, um, good protein. They do have a decent amount of fat. Now it's a healthier fat, but for that reason you don't want to overdo them. I look at roughly about 8 to 12 nuts a day is kind of the serving that I'm looking at. And I really like using nuts with the fruit as a snack because the nuts offer the protein and fiber to complement the fruit that may have a little bit more sugar. And so I think that's a really good combination. Then the next key part is eating whole grains. So you're trying to limit flour-based products, which really typically raise your sugar high, and eat the actual grains. As I tell some of my patients, it means you're eating like a horse. But you're looking for quinoa, which is a fantastic whole grain that's the only grain that has all nine essential amino acids, so it's a very good protein source. Brown rice, which is much better for you than white rice. It, it actually keeps your sugar much more steady. Barley, steel cut Irish oatmeal. A lot of people aren't familiar with this type of oatmeal, but it's the actual whole grain oatmeal, not the flakes you may be used to growing up. It kind of looks like grape nuts. It takes longer to cook, and likewise, it takes longer for your body to break down. So it helps stabilize your sugar and give you a very slow rise in blood sugar and fills you up because of its high fiber content. And again, we're really trying to limit processed carbohydrates. So this really seems to cause high or high sugar levels or fluctuation in your sugar and thus high insulin levels, which have a lot of health effects later on. So again, nuts, pumpkin seeds, these type of things can be a really important source of fiber and protein and I think a very quick snack in your diet. And one of the sort of great concepts that I've heard in listening to other people talk about diet is the importance of going to whole foods. <clears throat> and one of the great examples that we're given is you, we need to think like a bacteria. And what this means is a bacteria, you know, will eat almost anything. They'll eat feces and, and dirt and soiled products and uh, you know, anything that's kind of left over out in nature. But when you go to the grocery store and you look in the aisles and you see all this packaged prepared food that has a shelf life of decades, that means the bacteria isn't going to touch that stuff. I think Twinkies will last forever. We could have a nuclear war and I think Twinkies will still be there. And that's because the most simplest organism on earth, a bacteria, has figured out that that food will kill you. And that's why when you buy the fresh produce, within several days, it's becoming rotten. Um, but that uh, packaged food will stay forever. So let's think like a bacteria. Nature has already figured this out. Whole foods are much more desirable for your body. And if you can, in your diet and as you plan your meals, just eat God-made foods, I think you'll have much more success, be much easier in getting healthy. So there are a lot of known benefits of this Mediterranean diet, and it's not just that we think it's healthy, we know it has great, great uh, health improvement. Um, one of my favorite studies was the LION study, L-Y-O-N, and it looked at people who are 70 to 90 years old, fairly high risk group for mortality. And those who followed the Mediterranean diet and lived a healthy lifestyle had a greater than 50% lower rate of all-cause mortality. Really, really important. Also, again, talking about inflammation, this can be measured in uh, lab work, in uh, labs such as the C-reactive protein. And those who follow the Mediterranean diet actually had lower C-reactive protein compared to a more traditional diet. Um, and so we see objective evidence that this lowers inflammation in the body. And I think very important is in heart disease. People who have already had a heart attack who then follow the Mediterranean diet have a reduced rate of a second heart attack. One study that showed this was done in France, about 605 individuals, again, all of them had already had a heart attack. And half went on a sort of standard low-fat diet, and the other half went on a Mediterranean diet. And those who were on the Mediterranean diet had a 50 to 70% lower risk of recurrent heart attack. Now, can you imagine if there was a drug out there that could do this? Uh, it would be the number one bestseller. And the nice thing is that 
anyone can get this Mediterranean diet. Your insurance cannot tell you can't get it. It's not going to be out of stock at the pharmacy. This is one of the most crucial things, I believe, in your health that can make a big difference, especially if heart disease is prominent in your family or if you already have heart disease. So why is this diet so healthy? There are, I think, three major components to why this diet is, has such great health benefits, and I want to kind of at least go over those three, and then we'll dive into these more in the future. The first is its amount of antioxidants. By getting eight to 10 servings of vegetables and fruit, eating the rainbow, you get the antioxidants you need to shield your body from the effects of oxidative stress. We've hoped in the past that taking a multivitamin could do this, and it just does not seem to be the case. Getting antioxidants from vitamins does not seem to work very well. We know we need to get it from food. And in a sense, food is, can be a medicine, and this is one of the reasons why. Second, as we've talked about, this diet lowers inflammation. It does so primarily by changing the ratio of certain fatty acids that affect inflammation in your body, particularly by raising omega-3 and it actually helps uh, lower your blood sugar. This is the third most, almost most important reason for people who are trying to lose weight, who have issues with the blood sugar, is this diet maintains good blood sugar levels by offering low glycemic index foods. And we'll talk about the glycemic index uh, on a future video, but this is, uh, the glycemic index is something that tells us how much a food is going to raise your sugar and thus your insulin level. In this diet, by incorporating whole foods and being high in fiber, um, helps keep sugar levels steady. So I think going forward, realizing the health benefits of this diet really are unlimited, both in making you feel better, helping you live your life better, helping you with whatever medical conditions you may have. I think this diet really can reduce your aches and pains and be an important step forward in you becoming healthy. I hope this overview has helped. Have a great rest of the day.